Vegetate presents Welcome to my garden uh, I just want to let you guys know um, I want to do a top five vi uh, top five things not to do in your garden this season's been a, a blessing to me and I've uh, grew so much stuff this year that I've never been able to grow it's been a great season the weather's been great uh, it's the middle of August right now and we're at 85 degree weathers uh, all week 90s less than 90 uh, we've got um, tons of rain and also we'll show explain to you that one being one of my top five things um, but this one kind of want to show you things not to do mistakes that I've made that you know I'm not really proud of them but again I've learned from like not when I gotta do that um, but again I, I still can't really complain because this year for example I got over 10 cantaloupes uh, out of my garden. I didn't even plant cantaloupe. Uh, I don't know how I got them, but they're cantaloupe and I've ate them. I'm not a big fan of cantaloupe, but I grew it, so therefore I'm going to eat it, and they're actually quite delicious. Um, this year I've had eggplant growing. Never had that before in five years. Didn't think it was going to make it, this, you know, but I, I got it to grow and we got to eat it. So, here's my top five things not to do in your garden. Well, at least in my garden. So maybe you might learn those mistakes. Number one, when you're making a rain barrel, this is my rain barrel that I use inside my greenhouse. This is the, I use it mainly to uh, put make my compost tea with. As you can see, I've got my uh, bubbler for the bubbling uh, to keep the air oxygenated. And one of the biggest mistakes I did is I don't like the way I, don't like the way I made this barrel. Uh, one, I don't like the way I cut the hole in the top. It's too big, or I don't have you know. I just uh, wish I. Had, Thought about it a little bit better before I just started cutting on it, whacking on it with a, with a, uh, what do you call them? Skill saws, or not skill saw. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. The little saws with the little blade. Anyway, I can't think today. The, the other biggest problem that I've had is this right here. Can you see what's wrong with this picture? I'll give you a little countdown. Okay, if you can't figure out what's wrong with it, the problem is it's too high. As you can see right here, for about every inch of space on here is about a gallon of water. Uh, if you look, I'm about five gallons, maybe six or seven gallons short from the bottom. When I put the hole in there, I just drilled a hole and went, went to town and got my spout in there and everything else. And it works great. I put it up on the bricks. You can put your watering can underneath there and it works great. But I can't get all the water out of it. So, don't make that mistake. Always put your spout a lot lower and just use bricks to raise it up if you need to. To fix that problem, here's my solution. Sump pump. These things work great. Um, it pumps out tons of water. I use it to water the main garden once I make my compost tea. And uh, I get water out there fast and quick. But I still use I do still use the spout. Don't get me wrong; it's still great to have the spout. But uh, again, if you're going to do it, put it a lot lower. Number two, we have got the biggest rainfall we've ever received in Arkansas this kind of type of year. And what happened was the grass grew so fast that I couldn't ever get out here. And we're talking three inches, a, you know, one week, and then a quarter inch the next day, and things like that. Well, as you can see, the grass took over. It's a little embarrassing, but it got to the point where I can't even till it up anymore. I gotta get in there with a weed barrier, or a weed barrier with a weed eater, and trim it up so I can get in there to even try to till it up. It just overran. We're talking waist high now. Uh, so if you let your grass get a bit, I'd say above your calf, you're in trouble. But again, it rained so much, the weather was so bad. We, I couldn't get out here to even do anything to it, even if I wanted to. So, one, try to keep your, your, either have some kind of a weed protection or some kind of a way to keep the weeds under control. Number three, when I planted my tomatoes and peppers, I used the little white things, to tell, the markers to tell you what they were. And as again, as you can see, I have no idea where they're at now. They're, oh, it's been overran. I don't, I can't tell where anything's at. 
If I do, I have to dig in hand here. I'm scared I'm going to step on a snake. So, my theory is, if you're going to label stuff, get a pole. It's, you know, like this high, like a little sign, like a street sign, if you will. That, a marker that way. And mark your plants. So I won't be able to save any of my seeds this year. Because I don't know what they are. And I don't want to give them away to anybody because I don't know what they are. I can't tell you what they are. It'd be just a variety of some kind and it's not very ethical to do. So therefore I'm not going to do that and say, you know, here you go. Good luck. Hope they grow good. So if you're going to um, plant them, make sure that you mark every single plant and put it a plant or marker that's high enough so you can get into it. I use four foot tomato cages. Don't use those. Don't even use five foot ones. As you can see, the tomato plants have, with all the rain we've received, I haven't watered my garden since late, late June. It's now mid-August. I haven't had to water this because we've got so much rain. Unfortunately, everything has fell over. Watch this. Here's where it started at. I'm trying to hold it up. The plant goes down, falls over, and now they're starting to grow back up. And now just let them go. So, use taller uh, stake tomatoes or, or wooden stakes to hold on to them. Because as you can see, they've leaned over. They're looking pretty rough. But again, it's mid-August 5, which is great. Um, as you should be doing now. Is using preventative maintenance for bugs versus retroactive for bugs. For example, as you can see here, these little yellow sticky things are great, and I'm going to do a little video on those later. But use these as a preventative for white flies, which then will help prevent uh, caterpillars from eating your brassicas and your things like that. There's another one right here. Cover it up. There's a dragonfly flying around. So I have lots of bugs in here. So instead of using instead of using um, you know sprays and all that stuff, you're like, oh crap, I got this this year. I got that this year. Do prevent uh you know stuff like that ahead of time before they get there because you know they're coming. And again, I always fight with them every year. And this year I've learned to try to be one step ahead of them to help prevent them, keep them from getting established. Once they establish, they take over. For example, as you can see here, uh, these tomato plants right here are covered with spider mites. At first I thought it was the heat. There's one out there. I thought it was the heat taking over. But if not, it's spider mites, and I've got another video on how to fight those too. Um, but again, they're going to come. You need to kind of keep an eye on them. By the way, this tomato pants looks great right here. So, yeah, and for example, I got uh, uh, squash vine boars. I've got a video I'll post right here that shows you they're going to come. I replanted it. They came back again. And the only way to really prevent them is to block the moth from getting to them. So if I were to put some netting across there, some tool, uh, or tool, T-U-L-L-E, or however you pronounce it or spell it, uh, it would have been, they couldn't have got into it. And so I wish I would have done that. And I'll probably do that again next year. So using preventative maintenance or preventative defense before the bugs get in town, that's the number one key to keep the bugs at bay. And again, they still gonna get, they'll still get in and you can't stop them, you know, like, like to me, diatomaceous earth is not something you put on after you've got an infection. It's something you put on before you get your infection. It's not powerful enough to kill them off, but it will slow them down. It kills off the weaker bugs. But there's some that are resilient that doesn't, that just doesn't phase them. So, again, that's my five tips. I hope they were helpful. And if you like these kind of videos, I appreciate it if you leave a comment down below of your top five. So I can learn how something from you guys. And also appreciate it if you'd share or like the video. And as always, it grows things.